had to take a chance. We did, and the device went off. There was uh, some people rolled a bomb into Harvey's and then wanted a ransom for it to not detonate. And this was before satellite, so there was really no way to get a live shot out of you know, downtown South Lake Tahoe. We used a portable microwave transmitter to go from the ground to the helicopter, and I was up at 12,000 feet, and that was line of sight back to Sacramento, and we were able to cover that story live, and the other stations around town could not figure out how we were doing that. We haven't experienced the floods yet. We have had a lot of fires. Dave Allen in Livecopter 3 over the King Fire, where we're seeing the fire coming very close to Highway 50. You know, one of the best ways to see a fire is from the air. You don't really get that impact of how big an area it is or how large that fire is. You don't get that unless you see it from the air. Check it out, a growing wildfire burning out of control in Tuolumne and Mariposa counties. The Rim Fire was the one probably that sticks in my mind the most. Plus, how that fire ran was very different. It was, it was dozens and dozens of small fires that all combined to make that whole area go up. Let's go ahead and show you, here's the map of where this all started. I was on the air for about five or six hours for the two deputies. Also have live copter three over the scene to give you a, a very unique aerial view of the search. There was a there was quite a bit going on. You know, we had we launched in the helicopter and we had things going on from Arden Fair all the way out to Auburn. The area of Belmont is where they are currently chasing somebody right now. We had a reporter there and that frees me to just simply fly, work the radios and, and act as an airborne producer. It's many hats that get worn from the pilot seat. There's the pilot hat, the producer hat, the director hat, and now the reporting hat as well. We see three helicopters circling overhead. It's an honor to be flying live copter three for KCRA. It's a wonderful place to be. Investigations that spark action. KCRA in the community and at the Olympics when KCRA 60 Years of Excellence continues. Where the news comes first. It's not simply a promotional phrase. Hey, did you do it? At KCRA, it's truly a reality. At the forefront of some of the biggest stories, not just in Northern California. Honduras has become the United States' forward base in Central America. But all across the globe. What is the magnetism? Why don't you answer that question? I'm asking that question. Well, can't you see? Well, tell me. What is it? Well, what do you think it is? Do you know? Do you know? Don't play games with me. When it comes to big stories, Mike Boyd was the legend when it came to news in Sacramento. What is it that draws people to you? Music. Motion. Mike Boyd is probably the one journalist that I've met in my career in TV news that truly, absolutely loved his job. Has television news always seemed to be the quiet corner in your TV viewing? They're looking for victim number seven in the front yard of this home. The biggest story, I think the, the first one was Dorothea Puente. Boarding house landlady Dorothea Puente eluded authorities after seven bodies were discovered buried in her backyard. A week-long search throughout California and Mexico followed. She was finally found in Los Angeles. We couldn't get a plane out of Sacramento because all, they were all booked. So our station decided to get a plane. So we got a plane, jumped on it. But when the cops said, hey, could you change the flight plan? We said, yes, go do it. They said, hey, we're going to pick her up. I have not killed anyone. I told you that. I have not killed anyone. And he was there the night that um, the shooting at the the assassination of um, Bobby Kennedy. No, you didn't answer my question. 
Mike Boyd hasn't been the only dogged reporter. KCRA 3 took up the mantle of strong journalism from the beginning. Ted Kaczynski, the serial bomber. I remember the Unabomber because uh, I knew the man that he killed in Sacramento. We did have a bomb go off. I don't know exactly where. It's inside the building on the north side of I Street here. Here in Sacramento, a bomb was planted that killed somebody. And there was not a good clue as to who, where, how. JC, you hear mommy, I love you. And I want you to come home tonight. A car raced by, cut her off, and two people inside snatched her. So JC Lee Dugard, another one of those stories where you're just like, wow, I can't believe it. Uh, JC Dugard was found alive in Antioch. Excuse me. <laughs> She was found alive in Antioch. Authorities now say that J.C. Dugard has been living for the past 18 years with a couple who abducted her from near her home in South Lake Tahoe when she was just 11 years old. But the overriding feeling that detectives had at that time was, what went wrong? Because someone doesn't disappear that long without some red flags along the way that somebody didn't notice or somebody discounted. Well, why is that little girl in this backyard? So we are announcing today a $50,000 reward for information that leads directly to the location and recovery of Lacey. As the reporter who covered the Scott Peterson trial gaveled a gavel, people still ask me, what was the fascination across America with that particular murder trial? And I think that the, the answer is that it was a mystery. Scott wanted to be free. Lacey was like an anchor around his neck, and so he put one around hers. When you had beautiful, pregnant Lacey Peterson disappearing right before Christmas, her handsome husband appearing to be frantically looking for her, and then arrested on murder charges. And it wasn't until we were about halfway through that trial that I think most people, including the jury, got some answers. And that's when his mistress took the stand. How difficult is this decision? It's a hard one. It's a hard one. You've got two great cities. Well, we had already been on the East Coast covering another story, the, the NBA's decision about whether or not to move the Kings to, to, to Seattle. And it became apparent uh, one morning while we were there in New York City that that decision wasn't going to happen. The marathon bombing had happened several days before, and now there had been this manhunt overnight. I, I spoke with the news director, and she said, yeah, we, we, we should get on the road. We should, we should go to Boston. Two more bangs right there. That's a total of six by my count. We can see. Are we seeing those flashes? As we're running, I'm on the phone to Sacramento saying, you'll want to take our signal live now. Up pops KCRA 3's David Beanick in this Boston neighborhood and he is on the front lines of where these police have cornered one of the suspects, Jokar Zarnayev, the, the lone surviving suspect. There are two more, two more banks right there. Other big stories from major hostage situations. That was probably a night of terror that we had never seen before, and that is still called the largest hostage negotiation crisis in the United States history. Eight hours, 41 hostages, six people killed. There had never been anything like this before. Two chases that ended in tragedy and a landmark decision on gay marriage. And wow, grandmothers are going to be able to see us get married. But sometimes it's not the biggest story that connects with our viewers. Most often, it's the personal ones. A couple summers ago, when the little girl died of a peanut allergy, you know, and her parents, as grief-stricken as they were, they wanted to get that message out that food allergies are real and they're serious. It was always my greatest fear, and that we're sitting here talking about it, it seems surreal. And while the interview on television got a lot of uh, exposure, there are still places that will repost that story from around the world. I love the big stories, obviously, where we're on the front lines, but I'm going to be honest with you, my favorite stories are sometimes the quiet stories. But for Joanne, now the nightmare is finally over. For two years, she's been trying to get one answer. Where is her daughter Sarah buried? They are the stories where people come back to us. They either call us or they write. And they're the stories where people say, you made a difference in my life.
Part of KCRA's commitment to the community is giving you more than just the news of the day. From early news series to Call 3 for Action to KCRA 3 Investigates, we bring you stories that spark action, hold people accountable, and even change laws. They're stories you won't see anywhere else. We have continued our investigation, and it has led to one of the top officials of the Republican Party in the state of Nevada. Just you back there? We're very fortunate to have the resources to take people off the street, so to speak, on a daily basis and go look for things. Fire dispatch, what is the address of the emergency? Watch the clock in the corner. We're documenting everything in real time. From looking at what causes wildfires. They are burning out in the open. To people buying and selling uh, food off of Facebook. You were selling some chicken adobo. Are you still selling some? I covered this power plant intensely for about 10 years. Caltrans is spending even more money hiring a consultant. After our investigation, he drastically changed the penalties. People look to the, to the news organizations to see, to hold those government officials accountable, to make sure that they're doing their jobs. Oh. We showed our video to State Senator Jerry Hill, who sits on the Senate Environmental Quality Committee. Just 94 seconds, a minute and a half after our producer met Dr. Kamasura for the very first time, he had this signed recommendation in hand. And when you do a story that does affect change. Water wells in Rancho Cordova were being shut down because of toxins. Today, they conducted a sting operation just a couple of blocks from where I'm standing. Stop it. Stop Leave him alone. Hey, turn Leave the camera on. I don't need the camera on. This is a I mean, isn't that John why we got into this profession in the first place? Lynn County, Missouri deputies confiscated one of our tapes without any legal cause. Well, this is a problem we thought we had settled a couple of days ago, but we were a bit premature. One of the early cornerstones was Call for Action, which soon became Call 3. But it was far from just a consumer unit. We had a lot of complaints at one time about sick pets. People would buy puppies at a local um, uh, pet store and they were continually getting sick. They were coming up with worms and uh, not living very long. His lungs are infected or degenerated some way. We wanted to dig deeper. No way. No. Because... No, just go on. I'm not taking no pictures whatsoever. Just get out. Please. I said no pictures. Now move down the road. We went to Missouri and Kansas and Nebraska to look at some of the puppy mills that were uh, generating hundreds of puppies every year all over the United States and it affected change in the long run where some of these mills were then run out of business by the Humane Society of the United States. Well for me it's Rancho Seco which was a 10-year assignment from 79 to 89. You're looking directly into the spent fuel pool. A lot of people were surprised to know that Sacramento had its own nuclear power plant years ago and that it was uh, it had a rather troubled uh, past. It turned out to be built by the same company, Babcock and Wilcox, that built Three Mile Island. We all know the history of that. When it ran, it supplied the bulk of Sacramento's needs. The problem was it rarely ran well. This is the first of a series of live special reports from KCRA News. It came down to a vote of the public. And the public, the people of Sacramento, voted to shut it down. And they started shutting it down the day after the election. Oh my God, oh my God. And now I can smell it too. I mean, how many people pay attention to their gas meter, right? I mean, you, you go out and you walk by it probably every day going, you know, to and from the side of your house. but. When you see a zip tie on the gas meter, that might be a little curious. I can't believe that PG&E wouldn't inform me of what it was. But when you have three, four, five zip ties on the gas meter, and then somebody finally tells you, oh, that's because you've been tagged several times over for having a meter that's leaking gas, people are like, what, what does this mean? Why, why haven't you done anything about it? I would appreciate if PG&E would take responsibility. Do PG&E customers have potentially unsafe meters? You ought to look into their backgrounds if they've been arrested for these crimes, period. That's from the planet obvious. I think from my perspective, uh, having joined uh, Case Area 3 Investigates, um, would be probably the Department of Social Services and changing the law regarding uh, background checks. But there are some people with arrests for various crimes that have been working in facilities for months before those background checks are complete. Isn't that true? Not if it's considered to be a serious um, charge. But that does not appear to be the case. The legislators ended up changing state law to make sure 
that the background checks are done before people go to work in some of these facilities where you have children and elderly. Look, as journalists, we think the country works better when more people know more things. So the horses were drugged. We found stimulants like uh, methamphetamine, amphetamine, cocaine. Yeah, why are you closing it down? That's what we do. We find things out and we tell people about it. But the reality is most carjackers are still on the streets. And the fact that another child committed the crime makes it no easier to bear. Stories like that take a lot of time. This is the last thing they want to see happen to any of their customers. You want to adopt a stepchild? $640. Some stations just don't feel like that's a good investment in their broadcasting dollar. It simply is not a crime to be crazy. They don't want offshore drilling and they don't want oil tankers. Whereas here at KCRA, we do invest that time. Thank you, Northern California, for supporting Operation Care Package. Obviously, your donations. They made a difference, and a special thank you to the American Red Cross for helping organize it. And that's another part of the KCRA 3 commitment, one that has touched people across Northern California and around the world. For all of our 60-year history, we've partnered with local, national, even international groups to help them help others in need. Enlightening, empowering, and making an impact through storytelling. Now the company also publishes titles with the authors or well-known actors reading them. But are these cassettes an affront to real literature? It's part of their neighborhood crime control effort. You're visible here. You're walking around. Why is that important? The story of Locke begins 100 years ago when Chinese immigrants built this town. This was one of the original buildings here in Locke, and as you can see, not much has changed. Community partnerships. There are not people back here answering phones on the last two lines, and the only way they can answer phones is for you to give them a call. We have about 28,000 people plus showing up to run to feed the hungry. Our goal? to fill every one of these boxes with 10 tons of food. So let's take a look at the total overall, and a lot of this has come from the state employees. The grand total as of right now, 8,017 turkeys. The child grant volunteers are working pretty hard right now. The phones have been ringing off the hook. At the last count, we have over 1,000 calls. ACRA 3 reports, remembering Mayor Joe Cerno. Special programming, unlocking the mysteries of autism, unlocking the secrets of the mind. KCRA will begin an ambitious project to arm kids and parents with information to teach them what to do when confronted by a stranger. A huge highway project right through the center of Sacramento. They got to fix the road, so what do you do? Tonight, what's wrong with the roadway? Tonight, our state's golden dream and the present day realities. That now have California running dry. When you teach kids what not to do, you also have to teach kids what to do. What will you do the next time you encounter a bully? Tonight, a KCRA 3 special presentation, Bully. It can only increase our resolve to build a stronger community and to fight against all forms of hate. Now, live from Temple B'nai Israel, a special edition of Channel 3 Reports, Hate, Healing, and Hope. New plans, a changing health care system, and for some, tough choices. Tonight, information to help you decide. Covering California, ensuring your health. A KCRA 3 town hall with Galston Dard and Evie Lambert. And community events. Well, that's right. I'm standing here in uh, Sword Central. It's nice to get out, you know, get, get from behind the desk and get out there and meet the people and uh, meet, meet the viewers. I'll never forget Operation Care Package. Each company has openings, a confidence booster for many. We're having fun here. We're getting the fairness out. We're rocking to the good music. KCRA is invested in Northern California. We live in the communities we serve, and each community has unique needs and opportunities. <laughs> to celebrate diversity and raise awareness of culture, KCRA launched To Be Somebody in 1973. The situation is bad for our children. De Calores followed in 74. Perceptions premiered in 79. Tonight on KCRA 3 Common Ground. Common Ground carries the torch today. The KCRA 3 100% has, has set the standard for community involvement and, and doing uh, incredible work to, to make the place we call home better. At KCRA, who we are outside the office is just as important as who we are inside the office. I think uh, a local television station such as KCRA with the commitment to news that we have is 
uh, has a responsibility in the community to not only inform the community but to give back. Another hallmark of KCRA, our Olympic coverage, the drama, the excitement and the stories behind the international games. And starting with the 2000 Sydney Games, Deirdre Fitzpatrick and photographer Mike Domalog have traveled the globe, bringing the Olympic Games home to Northern California. We, so we've worked together as a team for the last eight Olympics. That over there is Parliament. So the joke in my house is that I've traveled more the world with Dami. Ozzy, Ozzy, Ozzy! That I have my husband, which is true. It's true. We're going really, really, slow. really. His entire wall is pretty much on a 45 degree angle. So you're either climbing or trying not to fall the entire time. So we've been around the world a little bit. PK, PK, yeah, we are. We have worked as an Olympic team together for a long time, and to give you a quiz. See if you can remember where we've been. 2000. Sydney, Australia. 2002. Salt Lake City. 2004. Summer Games. Acropolis. Athens, Greece. 2006. Vancouver. No. We were in Italy. Sydney, 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 Sydney. 2008. Beijing, okay. China. Oh man. 2010. Winter Games. The limo drivers are pretty much getting a non-stop workout. Vancouver, Canada. 2012. London. Probably one of the best. The yeah. best. <laughs> London was spectacular. And then 2014. Sochi, Russia. Sochi, Russia. Welcome to Olympic Park. Have a nice day. That was a crazy one. We basically line all the different mic flags up for all these stations up. And Dami and I like to do what we call threading the microphone cable. When we go to the Olympics, we're not really working just for KCRA. We work for Hearst Television, the company that owns KCRA. Here's your four touch, twist and shout paper, and this would be our picture. We're actually working for almost 30 stations. I might be standing in front of a camera and doing live shots for everywhere from Baltimore to Orlando to Kansas City. Um, six hours worth of live shots. So this, I'm going to predict right now, could be the next fashion trend in Baltimore. The last of which, ironically, is actually for the West Coast and KCRA. <laughs> and what if reporting becomes a synchronized job? We, we had the, the only camera, camera in the world, world in Coach Carver's final, final practice. practice. It, it was, was tough, tough and, and it was synchronized. So we might do 60 live shots yep. in a day and then go out and do many, many more stories. So the days are really long. It's 1.58 a.m. We are ready to go. That doesn't even make sense. It's 1.58 a.m. and we're ready to go. But we are. Light. Camera. Todd Nobody ever wants to hear this, but they're usually averaging about 20 yeah. hour days. And we go we for about today, three to four straight weeks of doing that. And we're glad to, because it is ridiculous fun. We're about two hills over from when the alpine skiing was going on and the downhill, all the big Olympic races. Woo! It's great fun. It's great fun. I mean, at the end of the day, it's, you, you really did something worthwhile and got to see something really cool. It's really hit me now how, how momentous all this is. We both grew up loving to watch the Olympics on TV, so to get to team up as we have for eight Olympics has been absolutely incredible. Sixty years of coverage across Northern California and around the world. Sixty years of growth, change, and innovation. Sixty years of excellence. It's a lot, and for some it might be considered enough. But at KCRA 3, we see 60 years as just the start. From those of us in front of the camera to those working behind the scenes, producers, editors, writers, and photographers. Also, our engineering and production teams, and many more who keep KCRA running around the clock every day of the year on the air, online, and on mobile. Each of us working with one commitment, one promise, one legacy in mind, where the news comes first. For all of us here at KCRA, thank you for the trust you've put in us all these years. We are proud of our achievements, grateful for your support, and eager to embrace all the opportunities ahead of us.